unorthodox, you know, for the speaker to act the way I'm acting. But I felt his presence all day long. In a most unusual way. I don't know about you all, but I expect another manifestation of the power of God in this house on tonight. I don't know about y'all, but my soul really do love Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes God just wants us to enjoy his presence. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to get delivered tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I believe that tonight, that every high place is going to come down. High places can't stand in the presence of the Lord. Did y'all know that? <laughs> we're going to go into the word of the Lord. <clears throat> I don't think we're going to be long tonight. Because I know there's so much that God wants to do in this house. You know, the Lord has done so many great things for this church. And I was at home today and the Lord took my mind back to pretty much when I first started coming to Peter's Rock. The warfare was exceptionally great. It was one of the, and I, when I say this, don't take it personally, but it was one of the hardest places to come other than Boston, Massachusetts. It had nothing to do with you. It had to do with witchcraft. Oh, y'all looking at me. I'm, I'm, just trying to bring you up to date. And <clears throat> it did not matter from year to year when I would come, and many a times I would be in the office, and many times I had to call my pastor and say, Pastor, could you pray me through because of the spirit of witchcraft? But I don't understand why folk try to work witchcraft against God. I've never understood that. Because you're not working witchcraft against the pastor, you're not doing it uh, against the church per se. You're trying to do it against God. But even as the years went on and went on, you could, I, I could feel that spirit beginning to decrease. And even today, when I was just thinking about it, the Lord had my mind go back. I said, wow, God has broken that spirit. Hello, somebody. I don't know if he sent the folks away. I don't know if they died. I don't know what happened, but something happened to them. Y'all quiet. Amen, somebody. But there is a spirit of liberty. Come on. And see, that's why people didn't understand. It was almost a safe haven once you got on the inside of the church. And that's why a lot of you all never really understood what was going on. Because once you got on the inside of the church, it was just totally different. All you could feel was the presence of the Lord. But if you was really a prayer warrior and really an intercessor, 
and I know there's some intercessors around here, then you could feel that spirit. But I thank God for what he's done for Peter's Rock. If you are all not grateful, I'm grateful. So I know that God is getting ready to move in a mighty way in this church. And some of you all, the reason things was held up because some of you all started saying, well, you know, they've been saying that for years. And it seemed like ain't nothing happening. But wasn't nothing happening because it wasn't nothing happening with you. Oh, God, let me go. See, in order for things to start coming to fruition, God first started dealing with you. Come on, somebody. And once he started dealing with you, then you can get in the vision that the pastor has. Because you're not here just to be here, church. You have a specific assignment in this church. And when you don't go uh, the, uh, obedient, when you're not obedient to the voice of the Lord, you hold up progress. Amen. This is right anyhow. This is my last night, so I don't care if y'all get mad. Y'all ain't got to come back tomorrow. No way. <laughs> but God, God is raising up a people in this last hour. And for all of you all that don't believe it, believe it. Because Peter's rock is in the mind of God. There is a plan for this ministry. And for you that have held on and been faithful, I promise you, when other folk don't have, you going to have. Oh, y'all ain't got to get excited. I'm excited for you. Amen. God is doing something powerful in this hour. In the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter and the sixth verse. We're going to start there, but we have other scriptures. But Matthew 5 and 6, I thank God for the outpouring of his spirit. I, I don't know how folk get lifted up, because you know what? If you got any common sense, you know that you can't make the spirit of the Lord fall the way it's been falling these two nights. Can't nobody get the glory but God. Come on. And I appreciate him. I love him supremely above all. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Anybody that know about the Beatitudes knows that bless means happy. So the Bible is saying happy are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. How many know that that's the reason we have so many sad folk in church? And do you not know naturally so, not just on a naturalistic level, people that are hungry, naturally so, are not happy people? Take a newborn baby. When they hungry, they mad as all outdoors. Come on, somebody. There's a different cry they have. It's a mad cry. But you can identify that cry. It's a cry that you really can associate with hunger. And the Lord showed me something. He said, that's the type of cry that comes up in my ear. That's why the Bible so, says that the Lord, he knoweth the cry of the righteous. And you know, God is so powerful that he doesn't even get our cries mixed up. Parents can be in the house and children all out on the street. And they child can cry out. They hear their child's voice over all other children that's playing. Come on, somebody. Well, the ears of the Lord is the same way. So for this year, what we have got to learn to do is to stay in the presence of God. I'm going to show you something because some people may get things a little mixed up. In the book of John, the sixth chapter, 
see if I have this written down. But I hear it right now, so 